was a clear black night, a clear white moon. Warmer G was on the streets, trying to consume some search for the E, so I could get some phones. Rolling in my ride, chilling all alone. Just hit the e what is going on, everybody? We are Tankers Fantasy Football, talking about the seventh round here of our average draft position discussions. Let's kick it off. Seventh round, first pick. Talking Mark Ingram here. I know this isn't that bad of value, especially what he was able to do for you in PPR realms last season. But with the Adrian Peterson addition, I'm saying he's at least losing a majority of his touchdowns and probably a lot of his first and second down work. So I just don't know if he's going to be able to return that value minus a Peterson uh, injury. Yeah, and even though this guy is going at his average draft position the seventh round I have been able to see him slide down to the eighth even the ninth round more often than not so this is a guy who I feel like seventh round is a little iffy but if we're talking eighth round ninth round Mark Ingram I feel like that is very good value when we're talking first bench player on your team Mark Ingram I would get more about it at that point it'd be way more savory for me as long as we're not talking about week one starter on your fantasy team, Mark Ingram, I would get a lot more about it, and that's what we could be talking about if he slips into the eighth or ninth round. All right, next guy out the board, we're talking Dante Moncrief. Absolute touchdown machine if he's on the field. I feel like he's poised for a tremendous bounce back season after missing a lot of games last year due to injury. But a lot of it will depend on Andrew Luck. Yeah, if Andrew Luck can stay on the field and if that offensive line can keep Andrew Luck upright long enough for him to get into these five-step uh, five step dropbacks, I mean, my goodness, I mean, Moncrief is clearly the guy that Luck looks to when they get down in the red zone. And with Dwayne Allen gone, that's going to leave some red zone looks on the table for him. And if Moncrief can stay healthy, and, if, and of course, if Luck can stay healthy, I just think Luck can be looking at, I mean, I just think Moncrief can be looking at an easy 9 or 10 touchdowns this season. Yeah, T.Y. has never gone over 7 touchdowns in a season. He's more of that yards kind of guy. So Moncrief is definitely going to eat up a lot inside the 20. And we're talking another guy who I really, really like in this Great round. Great value. We're talking Emmanuel Sanders, who I truly believe that he is a wide receiver too. And if you're drafting him in the seventh mm. round, where he's probably going to be like your third wide receiver on your team at least, I think that is tremendous upside from where you're getting him. Oh, I think you can write him down with at least back in wide receiver two production. I know we were talking about him in our fifth and sixth round videos about this guy is better value than a lot of these guys going in the fifth and sixth round, and it is true. This guy has reduced in the last two seasons. He had 76 balls for 1,100 yards and six touchdowns, and he had 79 balls for a little over 1,000 yards and the five touchdowns. So we're thinking his touchdowns are right at that five, six, maybe seven range. And if he can get those, keep those balls up to that 75, 80 range like he's been doing and keep that up at 1,100 yards, I don't think there's any way, shape, or form this guy isn't a very solid wide receiver two for you in this early seventh round, and that is just absolute value. I'm in love with it. All right, fourth pick in the seventh round here. We're talking Tyler Eifert. Very high ceiling. Has not played a full season yet to his career. Once again, an absolute touchdown machine if he is on the field. I mean, the guy has never been really a reception guy or a yards guy. So if we're talking PPR, his value is a little bit more down than we are talking PPR. And he is going into this mid seventh round but I just don't know if I can get on it when guys like Rudolph are going a full round later than him yeah. and Rudolph is a guy who is durable and who did finish as a second PPR tight end last season so if you're looking to get tight end late I just don't see any reason why you should pay that seventh round price for Eifert when guys like Rudolph is sitting down there in the eighth round for you it's ridiculous all right then we have Derek Carr going off the board Got, got paid this offseason. He still has his weapons. And when we're talking about Cooper, when we're talking about Crabtree, but I, I feel like the Marshawn Lynch signing is still going to take, you know, the 10 to 12 touchdowns away from him in the red zone like it did last year with Latavius Murray. But I still feel like their defense is not good. They're going to be down quite a bit. I feel like they will be slinging it. 
Marshawn Lynch may be able to help them stay on the field a few more times and keep that offense rolling and keep push over a third and one, third and two situation to keep that offense on the field. That may help him. Also, maybe Marshawn Lynch may be able to move a safety or two up in the box now and again to help a Cooper and Crabtree get over the top to also help uh, uh, Carr get proud. I'm looking at Carr having his best fantasy season this season. Oh, I think he definitely he's poised for his best season of his career so far this upcoming season. Guy that I'm not really on whatsoever. And he's been the first drafted Seattle back in pretty much every single draft that I'm in. And I feel like he's the third back that I want to own. Yeah, he, and I, that's I'm Eddie Lacy. I mean, people, I mean, Eddie Lacy was good once upon a fuck for the Green Bay Packers, but he hasn't been for like three seasons, and now he's moving to a new home, and it's not like the Seattle offensive line is out there world-beating because they are not, and I just don't think old Cheeseburger Eddie is going to be able to get over it, and especially like Thomas, guys like Thomas Rawls are going in that mid to late 13th round. Oh, Pro I mean, is going like the 8th or ninth, and then you've got Rawls easy in the double digits here. I mean, if we're talking about well, wait and see, put him on my bench, a guy like Thomas Rawls or C.J. Procise, I'd be way more about that than this Eddie Lacy here in the mid-seventh. All right. And a guy, Pierre Garçon, could be a target machine on a very sneaky bad pick. offense here. Sneaky pick. a good, decent, so, sneaky pick. Right. Pierre Garçon, once again, if you're getting this guy as your third or fourth wide receiver, I mean, this is a guy who definitely can fill up your roster on bye weeks. But I would not be shocked if this guy somehow finishes a top 25 wide receiver with I mean, the amount of targets he's going to get this year. I mean, Hoyer I mean Hoyer is Brian Hoyer, but Hoyer can huck it, chuck it football. As we've seen last year with the Chicago Bears, we had like four straight 300-yard games. games for the dog shit Chicago Bears, and we're talking about the San Francisco 49ers who are also dog shit. We're, this is a new regime. This is not the same 49ers. This is a very different offensive situation here. And I think, if, I mean, Brian Hoyer can dial in on some Pierre Garçon. We could be looking at, I mean, I don't think Pierre Garçon is going to return to his sexy boyness of when he was catching that like 115 like balls. 115 balls for the Redskins like three or four years ago. But I just think Pierre Garçon can easily find his way into that back end wide receiver two, mid range wide receiver two, somehow, some way. And if he does in this mid seventh round, that is great value. All right. Next we got Henry here. I mean, once again, I feel like this is a guy whose ceiling is temporarily capped off. Yeah, I mean, you got to be thinking that if DeMarco Murray is on the football field, he is probably looking to touch the ball at least 250 times, and that is just a lot of food off the table there for De yeah. Derrick Henry. Even if Derrick Henry is looking to be getting the goal line work this season, which I do believe he is, I, mean, I just don't know if I can get in on Derrick Henry as an every week starter for me. I think he was no, more. I feel like you have to draft him as your third running back minimum. Yeah, I think you just have. I don't think you can be going into the start of the season with Derrick Henry in your starting lineup, even in 12 team leagues. I think he's more of a wait and see kind of flex play out there. I mean, RB two. I just can't get. I just can't get behind it at this point. I have another very very sneaky play. We're talking Jeremy Macklin here in the seventh round. He was hampered by injuries all year last year. He's going to a team who the last two years no one's thrown the ball more than the Baltimore Ravens. He's got Joe Flacco, who I know he's still Joe Flacco, but I'll tell you what, he's a lot better than Alex Smith when it turns to throwing the football and I mean, force feeding it deep. So we could be talking about a resurgence in Jeremy Macklin to that wide receiver two discussion. Oh, yeah. I mean, there is no. I mean, Mac, well, Macklin was going early, mid fourth last year, and people were on that train. I'm thinking there's. I'm thinking his ceiling is even a little bit higher than it was when he was going that yeah. mid to late fourth last year for the Chiefs, and he is going mid to late seventh here. I just think this is great wide receiver two value. So if you are going running back heavy, or if you just like to get your quarterback and your tight end sewed up early, I mean, Macklin is great value here in this late seventh round. All right, then we got another tight end here. We're talking Delaney Walker. We had some guys come in. We're talking Corey Davis. We're talking Eric Decker taking away some red zone targets from him. 
I feel like he is still going to catch some balls, but I feel like his touchdowns will drop down at least two to three ticks here. Yeah, and Eric Decker is going to be a uh, 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 touchdown sniper, so I just think Walker does kind of hold his value, but I just don't know, like I said, about the Rudolph, and then you get into your Hunter Henrys and these other guys with higher upside in the later rounds, and I just think it's kind of more of a wait and see, I would say, instead of taking a Delaney Walker right here. I just think he's capped. Yeah. All right. Then we got Martellus Bennett here, who I'm not personally in love with. I know he does have a high ceiling with Green Bay, but Aaron Rodgers has really never loved tight ends that much. And last year, after he went down, after uh, Gronkowski went down, he did absolutely nothing for you, leaving a sour taste in your mouth. And yeah, I still hate it. Yeah, I mean, like we said. In the Dynasty Startup League with Martellus Bennett, I just don't know. I mean, like when Gronk went down week 10, I know Gronk came back for a little bit week 12, played a few snaps, got seriously injured, and left for the season. But we're talking about week 10. Martellus Bennett went out there and had seven catches for over 100 yards against the Seahawks when Gronk went down in that week 10 game. And you're like, yeah, this guy's going to be my boy. This guy's going to be my savior for the rest of the fantasy season. And from weeks 11 to 16, he just wasn't. He only had one game over double-digit PPR points from weeks 11 through 16 and averaged just a shade over seven PPR points. I mean, we're talking about bottom of the barrel type of ducks. We're talking about I might as well have just should have started the likes of Charles Clay or I mean any just bum off the streets and we're talking about Mercedes Lewis. Mercedes oh my goodness. <laughs> there was probably weeks out there where Mercedes Lewis was actually outscoring you bro. That's just fucked. Alright we got the talking about last pick here in last the seventh one. round. I am not on board whatsoever. Frank Gore I feel like I feel like this is his year where finally we can say he is not a starting running back anymore. I know. Last year, you just like keeps he's, going. He just won't he's, die, and I don't want to be that guy. It's like, this is it. Put the fork in him, but my goodness. His, I feel like this is it. He's like 34 years old. They drafted Marlon Mack, who is an exciting player. I think toward the his, end of the year, Marlon Mack will be getting some serious touches. His value just absolutely went in the tank after after their bye week last season. I think he only got in the end zone once or twice after the bye week and didn't even get over 100 yards. I mean, he I mean, he started off hot for you like those first seven weeks, but his value just went in the tubes. I just think the mileage is just piling on for old Frank, and I just don't. I mean, his offensive line just isn't very good as it is. I just think we are at the end of the line for Frank, and I know we have shit all over a lot of these guys' chests out there in in these rounds, so we're going to give you a few guys to look yeah. at instead. Yeah, we're just going to throw out some names here, talking about guys going in the eighth, maybe even the ninth round. We're talking Devontae Parker. I feel like there's a very nice ceiling on him. I know the hype train is rolling again as usual, but sooner or later, with his athleticism, it's got to turn around. The hype train is rolling, but he is going more into that eighth and ninth round, which becomes into your first bench player. So at least with the hype train rolling, it's more like a wait and see. So that makes it good. We talked about Rudolph. We got Cameron Meredith going in that late, mid to late eighth round. But I feel like he's kind of like the Pierre Garcon too. Except Meredith, obviously, is a lot younger, but he's talking about could be a target monster on a very bad team with not a lot of other weapons around him. Yeah, Roethlisberger going in the eighth round was a very high upside quarterback pick, especially if Martavis Bryant can stay on the football field. We got Kareem Hunt, which is, I mean, if you're we looking at a guy like Mark Ingram going around for Kareem Hunt, and we're talking about Kareem Hunt could be a guy who could actually take over his offensive running back touches and run with it when I just think Mark Ingram needs an injury to do so. All right, and then another guy even, a guy like Perrine, who, rookie, we don't really know what's going on, but I would draft Perrine a round or two later than a guy like Frank Gore, who I feel like we've seen what can happen. And at this point, if we're talking 7th to 10th round, I feel like I'm going to draft a guy who can maybe give me 20 points, even though he might have me some three-point weeks, when instead of a guy these... who's going to give me consistent eight to nine points because that's not winning me titles. I mean, we're talking, when we start getting into these bench spots, you got to start looking at very high upside, high ceiling guys. All right, then. That is the end of our 7th round discussion. If you liked what you see, subscribe below. 
maybe even give us a thumbs up. We'll love you. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. We will be back very shortly here for round eight coming back at you. We'll be back. Let's do it. See you later.